Welcome to the Rex Chapman Show, the 27th Rex Chapman Show with my super cool, super tough, super smart buddy, Josh Hopkins. Super tough. I don't think you've ever said super, super tough. tough before. Yeah. It must oh, be you, the beard. You, you, Is it the beard? Kick some ass. Well, you do look like you're in a bit of a hostage video. You're in New it Mexico does. on movie on a movie set. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. How's it going, buddy? Looking good. good. It's good. I haven't fallen off a horse yet. That's the thing yeah, I'm most worried a, about. Bit of a western type yes, of thing. Maybe. Yes, yes, a western, and I'm not much of a a horseman at no. at all. No, I hear. That, I, I, hear I did though, this that scene. Your horse has a good name, though. Yeah, I hear. my horse name is Ken. <laughs> Seriously, that's his name. That's his real life name. Is it, Ken. Kenneth? Does he go by Kenneth? Sometimes it's his mom calls him that. <laughs> I was I was on set and I was supposed to take my horse right up to this little stump pole and and dismount and they said action and all these you know chuck wagon came by and all these extras and I'm sitting there go horse go Ken let's go you know I'm supposed to be riding into town and the wranglers off to the side of the camera go he's peeing <laughs> so I look and <laughs> Ken is peeing and he pees for two minutes. Yeah. 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 I think they, they call it peeing like a racehorse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a reason. <laughs> Finally he went and I pulled up, you know, the, this little stump and I got off and, and the uh, DP was like, Hey, can next time, can you have him come like right here? I was like, <laughs> no, I'm going where Ken takes me. <laughs> I'm not riding Ken. Much say in the, He's carrying in the... me, okay? <laughs> and so, so I think we just kept the first one and moved on. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, well, it's good to see you, buddy. Um, great you know, we second. got uh, we got a good show today. Uh, oh. Episode 27. Mm. Who are the great 27s of all time? Mm. Um, well, I watched uh, Monday Night or Monday Night Football, and Eddie Eddie George is a hell of a 27. Eddie George, uh-huh. mm-hmm. yep. Uh, our guy, uh, B. Moore, Jamal Murray, twenty. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Can't forget and the I cat that, and the big Frenchman out in Utah. They call him Rudy Gobert. Rudy yeah. Gobert, <laughs> yeah, big yeah. long, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, some people say it different, but it's Mike Gobert. Trout. It's definitely Gobert. It's Mike, Mike Trout. Trout. I think he's wow. A, big. Yeah, you know they didn't they didn't rock twenty seven much when we were young, did they? Well, 27 to me still is, uh, you know, uh, CBS in, in Lexington, Channel 27. Yeah, <laughs> Channel yeah. 27. That's yeah, right. That's, that's right. That's 27. Uh, well, we got the NBA season starting today. And real quick, I got a message from a friend a little while ago. You know the friend, but I don't want to call him out here. And he said, remember back in the day when point guards were supposed to be the leaders of your team and lead in every way? And he said, what's up with Kyrie and Ben Simmons? Oof. So... I think that's, I don't know, it's a little harsh, but weird times we're living in. I sure hope we get to see those guys play basketball this year. I know. It seems like Ben Simmons had his feelings hurt. And so he's he's upset. Shit like that happens when you're a young player. It really, it really can. And and, because when you think about this, and really it's for both of these guys right now, Kyrie and Ben, you know, the Nets came out and said they weren't going to, you know, negotiate an extension right now. And in Kyrie's world, that's, this is the first time that he's being told something like that. Ben Simmons, number one pick, both of them, the first time in his life, you know, not college, not high school, the first time in, in his life that a team is maybe saying, yeah, we don't want you. Maybe we want somebody else. It's really hard to go through. I'm just, I'm just pulling for these guys to, to pull through and, and, uh, you know, persevere and get back to playing basketball. Cause man, I love watching them play. Yeah, um, me too. Right. Right. Uh, Kyrie just seems kind of like a contrarian and wants to be different. Like, uh, he almost seems like he's trying to get a little attention. I don't know. He, ben Simmons seems like his feelings are hurt and Kyrie seems like he, I don't know. It's kind of annoying to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know he's he's magic on that basketball court, and they got a they got a real chance. Who do you think comes out of the East and West this year, Josh? I mean, what we all well, not you hope, but I I just love to see Brooklyn and the Lakers. I mean, it would just be yeah. a dream 
matchup if no one's if they're all healthy and they play yeah. in the final that would be, be I would unreal. I'll t- I'll take that as long as the Lakers beat the Suns in the finals of the West but okay. really I'm not going to take it um F- Suns Brooklyn finals so now you're going. going are you going heart or head with that uh both okay a little bit okay. Of both. okay okay uh, okay okay well you know what Josh let's jump right into episode 27 with Frank Caliendo hold on did you read anything while we were off we had a long time uh, off did you, you know was anything that you read no I caught up I, but I did catch up a lot on sleep I didn't read oh anything. that's yeah. great did you Have, you- uh, well, have you ever heard of the author Tom McPhillips? Yes. I uh, didn't read anything. Of, I didn't read anything this time, so that's been book club. Okay. Sure has. All right. Well, that's uh, fine. Let's get into Frank Kelly. Hang on. We're going to talk to Frank Kelly and though today, but I think, uh, well, hang on. It looks like we got Bill Walton. Let's go straight to Bill Walton. What would we do? Why would we spend this time? I only have so much time on this earth as it rotates on its axis around whatever it is that the earth rotates on. Think about it for a second. As we orbit the sun, the greatest solar adventure of all time, the planet earth, the third rock from the sun, not only a way to say what the earth is, but a fantastic sitcom back in the day. How great it is. Say hello and let me run with it for all time. Rex Chat a 97 inch vertical at the university of kentucky has there ever been a player with the ability to go outside and then go inside as well yes uh, about 500 other guys and i went into marvel but there yes with authority caliendo making a reference to the newly <laughs> retired marv albert one of the finest broadcasters in the history of Western civilization, not unlike the statements that Bill Walton would make. That is exactly what I'd say, Marv, going from voice to voice, not necessarily understanding what we have to say. This is Rex Chapman's podcast, and he's barely even talked. There's a hostage crisis. Look at this man down in the lower left corner. If you're Frank Caliendo, it's Robin Williams. Oh, my gosh, what would it have done if I was in a hostage movie? And we're dancing, and we're dancing, and we're back. Madonna, Madonna, here we go. Let me free and let it be. Here it is. All right. Is that oh it? my god. We do oh it? my god. Uh, uh, <laughs> no questions. Just keep going. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, that's that's, that's a hell of an intro. Uh, well, guys, you, Frank Caliendo is on the show uh this week. <laughs> Buddy, how are you, man? It's good. finally good to hook up. Yeah, it's uh, it's been great. It's so funny because when I first, <laughs> I think you, you may not remember this. I don't know how good your memory is, but um, my, mine's uh, mine's not. Mine's may fair to Midland at best at this point. But <laughs> um, I when I would see you on you know Twitter, I would go. Or, you know, originally you might have had four, three, four hundred thousand followers at the time. I'm going. It is so weird that this internet guy who's doing blocker charge has the same name as rex chapman the guy one of my friends dave van beek couldn't stop talking about at waukesha south high school i was like uh i was like what no way that that well could it be could there just be another rex chapman or somebody because you have what what's in your um the the icon there whatever the picture is that prince uh uh, it's well it's it was me when i was young i looked a lot like prince really is that you it looks like (laughs) It's Prince. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Because I, I was like, "Holy cow! Diamonds and pearls." Um. Oh, uh, holy crazy. diamonds and pearls, Batman! Like, like, what's going on here? Like, what? Like, what, holy raspberry beret. I went instead of Robin. I went straight to Shaggy. Another Casey. Uh, like straight to Shaggy. Like, like Casey Casey. We got to go Casey Casey. Like, hey, Batman. Like, it's no. I'm going way up there. Rut row. Can't do it anymore. Uh, yeah, so I'm like, what's this guy doing? I, I mean, this guy's stealing Rex Chapman's identity. And uh, and then I think I reached out to you or saw something, and I was like, uh, yeah. yeah, I was like, hey, I don't, are you Rex Chapman? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, well, that, that still doesn't make and, sense. And I was a huge fan, though. I oh, was you a were. huge fan of yours. Yeah. You, you knew me from basketball, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, more so college, the legend than college. Yeah, I mean, I right. know you played in the NBA. Um, right. Uh, I, I, you know, what's funny is I, I live in Phoenix and I had, this sounds terrible, but it's honesty. I, I have a problem with that. I Man, I'd forgotten that you played with, uh, you know, the Suns. It's, with the Suns, yeah. yeah it's, well, how did you negotiate this last, uh, you know, the finals? Being a Wisconsin kid and now living in Phoenix when the Phoenix Suns had their best year ever. Um, one, it was brutal because I had, let's see, I had basically – been rooting for the bucks you know i i listen i i don't have strong allegiances i'm the i'm the wishy-washiest sports person <laughs> ever because and, and it's i'm gonna just backtrack here for a second and like it's happened mostly because of football and football uh you know you meet players and you become friends with players not like super close friends but you become friends with players and then you root for the player one not to get hurt and two right. to have a good game and so I, I just like to see, you know, good games in general. But in terms of basketball, you know, I did the LeBron letter. Uh, so why, and my wife's from Cleveland. Um, wow. I grew up in Milwaukee. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was rooting. I rooted, rooted for the Bucks, you know, for many years. Not always vocally, but behind the scenes kind of, you know, cared about what was happening with the Bucks. But this year, as the Suns were ascending, I bought season tickets. So, as soon as you, I had an investment into the team, I was like, well, now I need the, the, the Suns to win. That's just, I just want my tickets to be worth more because um, so, I'm a money guy. So it, I was rooting for the Bucks all the way up until, uh, you know, they got to the finals. I'm like, the first year I really, truly start rooting for the Suns full out. And now the Bucks are in the finals against them. And I, listen, I thought the, I thought the Suns had it. I mean, I was talking to people from Milwaukee and, you know, the first two games, they were playing, you know, the finesse speed ball and, you know, the kid, you know, young kids. Uh, I know Chris Paul's a little older, um, but, you know, in, in general, it was the young kids and they were just moving up and down the court and they're playing aggressively. And I'll go, then all of a sudden it was like they, they had to move up to a heavier, you know, they were moved up to heavyweight fight uh, yeah. and the Bucks turned into, you know, what did they average? Like 50 pounds a guy more than. Uh, it's just crazy, you know, and, and. Phoenix had it all going their way, but the one thing about it, Giannis had been out, you know, right. leading up. And yeah. once I remember seeing him before game one, you know, there was a question whether he was going to play or not. Watching him warm up or the pre warm up, you're going, how in the world is this guy doing this? I mean, and you knew he'd be a little winded, but the longer the series went on, yeah. he was going to get better and better because his wind was going to get better. It was well, remember, cr crushing it, it, for a Suns fan. Yeah, and his leg bent the opposite way. I know. How? Like, like, how does that come back? And then, you remember, he was leaving early in games, and nobody knew what was going on. He's like, uh, how you say, uh, got to take a tinkle, have to take a tinkle. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I, you know, there was that. And then uh, who, who's the, um, I, I can't, I, 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 this is the, the one of my uh, problems. I never remember names. Sorry. But who's the With big the guy? Sons? No, on the Bucks, big guy, um, Stanford. Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez. Yeah, I always think yeah. Robin Lopez and Robin played there right. a little bit. But Brooke Lopez started using the big body. And when the, once yeah. those guys started, it was like men playing against, uh, you know, almost not, I don't want to say high schoolers, but it felt almost like men playing college kids. Yeah. It's, it's and you, and you forget, you forget with Brooke, great point. If you forget with Brooke, he was drafted as a top five center when centers played with their back to the basket. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's become this, he's essentially a two guard now, but when yeah. they needed him to go down and get dirty in the post last year, he was, he was able to do yeah. that. And I mean, he hits the shots from the outside and uh, you know, like you said, as a two, he's, yeah, they just that, that it all came together for the Bucks, and yeah. you know, for me, it was like a no lose situation. I, you know, I could have looked at it as a no win yeah. situation, but it was like, you know what, Milwaukee needs something like that. It feels good for Milwaukee to get that, and you know, you know so yeah. much family back there and friends that were all excited about it, and you know, they have winter. <laughs> the NBA is back. And at DraftKings Sportsbook, an authorized sports betting partner of the NBA, the key to victory is a strong starting five. New customers can bet just $5 on any NBA team to win their game. And if they do, you win $200 in free bets. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also get skin in the game with new same game parlays. 
Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code Chapman. Bet just $5 on any NBA team to win their game and win $200 in free bets. If they win, you win with promo code Chapman. This week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an authorized sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 or older in New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. You grew up playing sports, Frank? Yeah, I, I, I was, uh, you know, I grew up in Waukesha, Wisconsin. So, um, how big, how big is that? Uh, well, it's a suburb of Milwaukee, 13 miles west of Milwaukee. So, okay. Waukesha, right. Waukesha County's JJ Watt. I'm trying to think of anybody who's come out of there. Um, Waukesha, John Anderson, who played for the Packers, uh, Les Paul, guitar. Okay. Um, yeah. There's, you know, I'm in, I'm in like the top 20 of people probably to come out of <laughs> Waukesha. So, that's, it's, it doesn't have that great of uh, a history. Um, I, I know I'm missing some people. People will be like, you know, who else came from there? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> people will be like, Kelly, I don't think she's in the top 20. He doesn't, he doesn't make it to the top 100. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so I grew up, my dad was a minor league baseball player um, before I was born. He played for the Sarasota Sun Sox and the White Sox organization. Oh, wow. Uh, he went to, he was from Elmwood Park, Illinois suburb of Chicago, um, went to Triton Junior College where Kirby Puckett went to school um, or to, to, to um, you know, JUCO. And then uh, at Eastern Illinois, um, home of Tony Romo, Jim, here we go, <laughs> Eastern Illinois. <laughs> um, and uh, then went out and played a couple of, you know, seasons, uh, went to rookie ball and I think maybe something else, but he went to play, played like three years. They couldn't hit. He was a middle infielder, you know, little Italian guy who never knew how, you know, he, he self-taught how to play baseball. Um, you know, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Kind of like an Archibald Moonlight Graham type without the magic of stepping on the diamond and saving a child. Um, listen, I got all the field of dreams. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go nat the natural here uh, in a few seconds. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we grew up playing baseball, football, basketball, even though, you know, Scott, you think hockey too, I guess, but we didn't, we weren't in a hockey. Um, I played football a little bit till about eighth grade, ninth grade. I, my knee tore in half. I was a running back, believe it or not. And, uh, I, uh, yeah, I went run into the a sweep uh, to the outside and we were scrimmaging the sophomores and I got hit high and low at the same time and tore my ACL. Uh, I never got it fixed either. And uh, apparently I never needed it. Um, uh, but I played <laughs> you baseball. Didn't? Uh, no, I mean, I, I mean, what was I going to do? I mean, I, I was, I was playing, I love baseball and I was a zero tool player. So it was that kind of a thing. <laughs> they looked for five tools. I had none of them. Um <laughs> So, and, and uh, basketball, I'm five, six and no leaping ability whatsoever. So, and, and, you know, set shot Buford, fish that, uh, fish that say Pittsburgh. We got that in there. Am I making all the I references? Metal yes, Arc. you are. M my favorite. Oh, did you love that? My favorite it's movie. the fish. Yes, I did. Fish that say Pittsburgh. That say Pittsburgh. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, I got, I, uh, listen, I got great references if you're uh, somewhere between 90 and 150 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but that had great people. I had Dr. J that had Metal Lark Lemon. Um, and it was just and, one of those. Uh, what, what's her name? I'm going to get it wrong. Rizzo from Greece. Oh, really? I don't Andres. even know. Mm. Yeah, I'm Jonathan... talking about. I think Jonathan Winters was in it. He was the team owner, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Playing, I was play, playing with, uh, you know, all those train sets. There we go. That edition's going to be good. Um. <laughs> So I grew up more playing baseball because at least I thought I had a chance, you know, because it doesn't, you know, baseball is the great equalizer. It doesn't matter how tall you are. You, the, you could, you know, really, you got to be fast to be able to throw the ball. But um, I was OK. We played um, junior Olympic baseball. We actually won the national championship in 1988. Nice. Yeah. You know, Fantastic. that's my fun. I was an All-American. Not that I'm, you know, really <laughs> proud of it or anything. 
but everybody's um, got a scrapbook. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I got, I got some for other people that I just paste my face into. <laughs> uh, so um, the, we won the 14 and under in Urbandale, Iowa. And then the 18 and under that was there actually had a team that was comprised of some pretty good players. One of which was Craig council. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, so Craig, yeah. The craziest batting stance. And my brother used to throw batting practice to Craig. <laughs> He's now the Brewers manager. And, uh, you know, Ter Craig was that Terry or Rico? Rico, my brother Rico. Yeah. Wow, somebody's been Googling. Um, <laughs> so, no, I'm uh, just fa big fans of Rico. Oh, yeah. Rico, of Rico's, he, Rico's yeah, actually, yeah. Rico's got a band now. So, uh, he's got a who I, tribute. I know. Band. No, of course you know. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, he, um, you know, that was, the, that was my little clan fan. I love baseball. You know, I watch, I would watch the natural. I don't know. Were you, were you um, superstitious at all playing basketball? You know, I, I, I was at times, I guess yeah. early on, earlier in my career. I, and then yeah. I became less superstitious over time, but yeah. Yes. If you're asking, I got, I had a big night on the bulls once uh, uh, late in my career and uh, had peanut butter and jelly for before that game and ate peanut butter and jelly for three weeks before yeah. every game. So right. yeah, maybe a little superstition. Yeah, see, I used to watch the natural before every game. And if I, if I went, if I didn't watch the natural it was weird, I wouldn't have a good game. And I was starting, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to watch wow. this every, remember Wade Boggs used to eat chicken before every game. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think baseball is a more superstitious sport overall. I, you know, I don't, I don't know why that is. <laughs> But I feel like baseball a lot, of, a lot of time to sit over there yeah. and think and contemplate. <laughs> There's <laughs> always a lot so, of time. So, uh, Frank, I think would I have seen you for the first time? I'm trying to think back. But what year did you go to Mad TV? Well, the, my trajectory, if you can call it that, I I went to I was in college until I got to work this backwards myself. I was in college yeah. till 1996. I went to the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And then uh, I graduated from there and started doing some stand-up comedy a little bit during, but waited until the end to really start doing it. Um, and uh, so 96, I started uh, and was doing some colleges within about a year, somewhere in there. And I think it was on, t on TV by like 1999, might've been like only three years of doing it. I was I was getting on there. I got on the Craig Kilborn show. Kill me. Wow. Oh, yeah. You got to love me. Um, God. So That's did crazy. the did Kilborn and then I uh, had a Comedy Central half hour. I think or no, I did premium blend for Comedy Central. And then I got a show called Hype on the WB. That was this was all in 1999. And I got a development deal because I went there and just did a bunch of impressions and nobody was doing impressions at the time. So I got the deal with Warner Brothers um, and we, a show called Hype came out and it was a big thing for um, for the WB. Uh, they were like, you know, Steve Harvey was on at the time. Jamie Foxx had his show and they wanted to go out and sketch and they put sketch in primetime, which has never had a, a great history. Sketch has always been better for late. Yeah. Night. Um, but they gave it a try. And it was the whole night was because they were so happy and excited about the show was hype night on the wb you know for like we were premiering and it, it's hype night on the wb three weeks later it's the wb sunday you know so we we knew we were going down when it wasn't hype night anymore um so that that moved on that that show got canceled and then um i auditioned for mad tv and then said i didn't want to go back for any more auditions they tried to keep me going back during that hype when that um when that uh, process was going on and I got the development deal before hype came on the air. So after hype got canceled, they just kind of put me on Mad TV. The president of Fox, um, Gail wow. Berman, I believe was her name, saw me somewhere and was like, you, we'll just put you on Mad TV and Mad TV had wanted me from before. So they just kind of put me on the show. I didn't have to audition again. Um, and what was really big was that the NFL on Fox, Kimmel had been having me on doing the John Madden thing. Um, and Madden didn't like me at all. Didn't, I know, you know, I don't think anybody there really liked Jimmy Kimmel at the time because he was just nudge people. I mean, he'd make everybody mad, right? That, that's just Jimmy. That's, that's his kind of comedy. I'm, 
cherubic and silly. Jimmy's going to you know, bother you until he hits the, the lab. And he's brilliant at it. You know, it's just a different style. Um, so uh, I got offered the NFL on Fox gig. Uh, there were auditions and there were great people auditioning. Um, Jeff Dunham and his puppets, <laughs> I know, yeah. uh, who's become massive. Like he was, he was yeah. kind of on a downswing from where he was at that time. And he'd actually told me it was him or his puppet Walter. I don't remember which told me, but one of them told me that, that what the hell? Um, I do a Walter impression. What the hell? Um, he had told me that uh, that was a big moment for him by not getting that gig. It actually pushed him to do some other stuff, and he, you know, he became a, a stadium ventriloquist. Um, so that was uh, uh, he was one of the, the people. Uh, we all did audition tapes. The other audition tape was a point counterpoint and it was Craig Robinson, um, you, you know, wow. from hot tub, high machine, yeah. the office, all kinds of stuff. And uh, a, a Billy Gardell, you know, uh, so it was Craig. <laughs> and Bill, hey, Frank, what's going on here? Uh, I was almost the Johnny Campanella. Sorry. So um, so it was uh, that and I got I got the gig because they're like, well, this can go on and on and on. Craig and uh, Billy were great, I guess, too. They were the, with the puppets. They're like, I don't know if that'll work every week. And Terry Bradshaw watching a puppet every week trying to explain to him, it's not real, Terry. Yeah. What do you mean it's not real? <laughs> it's, not re it's not real or it's not a person. I can't tell. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, the NFL and Fox stuff start, you know, that was a tough thing because when you're in sports and comedy, and was, this was just, I, I kind of fell into sports and comedy because that's how I grew up. I always tell people, you know, if they want to get into entertainment in any way, shape or form, take the classes in, in school, take the, you know, some uh, theater arts, that type of stuff. Pay attention in history, which I never did. Pay attention in literature, learn about history and writing and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, have a better than average grasp of science if you can know a little bit more than everybody, you seem like a genius. All you have to know is a little, you don't have to be Elon Musk, right? You don't have to be him. You just have to know a little bit more than everybody. Like, oh my gosh, this, this guy, this person knows everything. Um, so genius. yeah, they think, they, they, so uh, I wish I'd pay more attention to that stuff, but I just, sports was my thing. You know, I was a catcher in baseball. So I would talk to the, you know, the batters and the ump and I'd make them laugh and try and throw them off that way and just be silly. Uh, and goofy. Um, and uh, that was what I knew. So I knew sports a little bit. I didn't, you know, I didn't have a, you know, people think I have this incredible inside knowledge of, you know, sports and uh, no, I, I just like sports and have played sports. I, I, you know, I don't know more than the average fan. And that's sometimes it's better to come that from that direction. And sometimes it's better to know a lot more um, probably would be better for me, but I never wanted to be a sports comedian. That was never my you intent. Do I recall it right that you got a little pushback once you, when you got on the on the NFL right. show? Um, as far as just uh, were you welcomed? Uh, oh no, no, they, no, because no, you they, weren't a football guy, you know per se. No, they hated. And, or, they had. They had. They, they did. You know, there was a dislike. I thought I remembered that a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, you're making fun of the thing about you know. I think a lot of professional sports, and especially football, is if you're not from the club. It's it's weird to be making fun of guys in the club, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the difficult thing. So you you know, I'm, I'm this goofy comedian guy coming on doing silly voices, uh, and and they're kind of like, what what do, what are you doing here after four or three or four years of Kimball just pushing them, you know, pushing all their buttons and driving them crazy. Um, I thought the first three four weeks I was going to be fired. I, you know, the first one wow. fell real kind. Of, the first one was actually pretty good, but they didn't know how to react because nobody made fun of them. Uh, I did a yeah. bunch of auditions. It was like De Niro and um, I don't even remember who all of them were, but you know, there were some staple impressions and um, uh, Robin Williams who's still alive at the time and maybe an Adam Sandler. I'm not sure, but, but the, it went, it actually was pretty good, but I didn't make fun of the guys at all. So thus they didn't have anything to come back with. And that's what we, you know, we found is you had to make fun of each guy basically once if you went to the well too much, it started to feel like, uh, <laughs> I don't know about this. So, um, <laughs> So the third or fourth week I did, a, uh, I think it was, a, I'm trying to think of the, the exact order, but I, there were two that made a turn around. And it was, I did Jimmy Johnson on his boat and it was an okay impression, but it was a good sketch. Like, you know, 
you know, I'm just throwing little lines in there. Like, There's my stripper pole, you know, and stuff like this. <laughs> you know, he's talking about all this stuff on his boat. How about them towel boys and, and everything? Uh, and the other one was a Jim Rome impression, which was only for a few people, but the few people who got it thought it was the greatest thing that had ever happened. How great is that? Incredible, phenomenal, arugula. So we had a guy who looked like, you know, Al Davis was still alive at the time. And we had a guy that was like a hundred years old playing Al Davis. And he just kept falling asleep during the interview. And it was actually, I, I called Kimmel and said, man, this gig is hard. He's like, here's what you do. You got a guy, you got to do something. Uh, you, you know, you get an old guy to play Al Davis and, to, and, and then that got us kind of on the roll and, and started going. So that's great. Um, yeah. When did you know you had this, this talent ability? Like, did you make fun of teachers in school? Could you do voices then? When did you know? Yeah, there was a guy, you know, there were teachers, uh, Mr. Christensen, the basketball coach, coach uh, he taught um, U.S. history and geography. And he would go, Mr. Caliendo, can you uh, come up to the map and show us where uh, Nebraska is? And I go up and point to Blue. He goes, sit down, Mr. Caliendo. That's enough. You know, shoot some free throws. Let's, uh, let's, go, uh, let's go run some laps and uh, shoot some free throws. Shoot some free throws. Get tired. Get tired. Get tired. Everybody get tired. Because that's, that's when you lack concentration. And, uh, you know, take the cookie out. Take the cookie out. So... Um, and there was a guy, Darren Barsh, that was a, a friend of mine. He was like one of the guys that all the girls loved. And uh, he'd have, he, was, he was always feathering the hair. He had the, the, the pocket comb and he'd pull it out and fed, you know, pull the hair back. And he always flaring his nostrils. Like, just kind of, you know, it was almost like the Roxbury guys, uh, you know, but it, you know, it was 1991, 92 at the time. Um, super tan guy. Uh, <laughs> and um, so he, uh, so I would do like impressions of friends and stuff like that. I never thought about this stuff. I mean, did little bits of voice, but I think everybody does that. You do, you know, mess around with your friends and stuff like that. But it wasn't until college, I took broadcast journalism classes. I was like messing around with trying to figure out the John Madden voice and the Pat Summerall, Pat Summerall along with John Madden. I'm like, there you go. Boom. And it's funny because I don't have this terrible itch. I, I must have eaten something. I don't know. Um, but with the energy, people think I'm on some type of drugs. That's that's a crazy. <laughs> there's always people like, what, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, uh, you're fidgeting a lot. I'm like, yeah, I, I've got this itch. Got like, this itch. Yeah, the itch for what? What are you itching for, man? Uh, you need me to get you something? Like, no. What? And what can you get? Who are you? Uh, so, uh, so you so knew then, you knew you had the talent, but you didn't until college start to assert it, start to really like, I oh, I can. Yeah, because I had to go. I would have to. It was at a point where I was going to have to go get a real job, right? I mean, I don't. Oh, know, yeah. I don't want to do that. I, it's. Uh, I uh, I I went to broad went into broadcast journalism because I loved TV as a kid. I never felt I was never one of the people who wanted to go ask all the questions. I felt like I was in a bothering people. I still have that kind of thing today. I don't like to perform to an audience who's not really excited to see me. It's one of those kind of things. It's like yeah. you go to, to a neutral audience. You're kind of like, you know, in somebody else's show, you're kind of like, eh, you know, they're there and they're, <laughs> they're ready to see you. It's for me, it's more fun. I don't like that. You know, some people love that. Some people love, I'm going to win this crowd over. I'm like, no, nah. pretty daunting. I've spent enough time winning people over in my life. I, <laughs> I'd rather have it. You know, Seinfeld talks about, you don't know if you're funny. How do you know if you're funny? They didn't see you. I'm like, well, yeah, that's a, I don't care if I'm funny. It's, I, just want it to be, I just want the people happy. Um, Frank, Frank, from the time, from the time you start, I mean, just pick someone from the time you go, all right, you know, this is someone I can do or that I want to do from the time you start, to the time you got it down, I mean, how long a process is that? Also, what kind of also process walk is us it? through the process. Like, yeah, how do you is, how do you do this? Well, I mean, first of all, you down. never know what's going to work. You never know what's going to hit. Um, you, 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 so you just throw things out and practice them, right? You just throw things out and start thinking maybe this person. What, like a reason for a Charles Barkley? If Charles Barkley was only about basketball, that would be one thing. It would be very specific audience. But when Charles Barkley goes on and has, you know, he's a, he's a pitch guy. He's selling things yeah. on TV. Now he's in commercials. He's part of the pop culture. And it's, 
Barkley is, and for me, this has become something like very interesting to me, especially where I'm at, at, at in my life, is Barkley is one of the few people that's like completely honest, right? He'll just go out there and just say, you know, things that you're like, I can't believe he's saying this. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, like uh, I talk about it, like a couple years ago, um, Draymond Green, uh, you know, the Golden State Warriors. He Barkley went on t- television and uh, on TNT and said, I want to punch Draymond Green in the face. Now, everybody went crazy about that. Like, you got to apologize. And Barkley's not the kind of guy to get out the piece of paper and go, I apologize for the following reasons my lawyer says I should be sorry. You know, he's not going to do <laughs> that. He's he, But he found something. You know, they made him do it because it was starting to snowball. And, they, they you know, he went up there and I could not believe that he did this because it was the most brilliant. It's almost like a cheat code in a video game. It's like he went up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, start, you know, or zero, zero, seven, three, seven, three, five, nine, six, three. We're going straight to Tyson knucklehead. So he went on television for this Draymond Green thing. He looked directly in the camera and did said something he could live with that worked enough. He looked in the camera and said, I apologize for recognizing that Draymond Green has such a punchable face. And that's basically what he said. And he was he was on, you know, he got 50 extra lives. You know, it was like, that's Charles. Being, you know, they'll ask Charles Barkley, they'll, they'll be like, what do you think about uh, what's going on in the Middle East? And they'll put him on CNN to do that. Yeah. He'll be like, yeah. well, here, here's what I think, tiny little wolf blitzer. First of all, sit in my pocket for a little bit. Wolf, wolf, we're, we're going to get you nicely groomed. Know, and it's going to be very, very good. We'll get a full moon and you'll become full on wolf blitzer, knucklehead. So it, it, this is what I think, Wolfie. Here's what the problem is. I think it's ridiculous that you guys put me on CNN to talk about the Middle East. That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my entire life, guys. Come on. All right. Next segment. So, I mean, he's even <laughs> honest about that. Uh, so, um, so you have to find somebody that is in that's enough well known enough yeah. that that people will get it now that's a little different in the day of, in this these days because all you have to do in these days is find a a, a niche a niche or a niche that's uh, i combined those two and got niche um <laughs> That, that's that, N-E-E-C-H, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Two E's. <laughs> that people can that share with each other. You know, like people will do that now. So you can have a yeah. more specific impression that's not for everybody and it'll get shared all over the place. That's the, you know, that's the whole, that's exactly, that's Sorry, what, that's what TikTok what is. Um, my phone keeps going out. Like Siri thinks I'm talking to her, but, uh, <laughs> but I have nothing to say to you, knucklehead. That's what it's all about. Um, so, um in terms of, I'm trying to think here. So in terms of like the, um, the impressions that you go and look for, uh, you have to find somebody that you think could catch on with something. Otherwise it's just a waste. I have a friend who does, uh, uh, you know, some very offbeat, a couple of people I know that do very offbeat impressions. Um, and, uh, I'm like, that's just a waste of time. Like a presidential candidate to me, a presidential candidate that doesn't win, this, these things take a lot of time. If you don't have it like that, yeah. it's 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 like John Lovitz working on Michael Dukakis. Now what? Listen, I <laughs> if he'd have won, I'd have been a hero. But um, what's his name? Romney. Like people are like work on a Romney. I'm like, well, if he doesn't win, it's a waste of months. You know, yeah. it's uh, yeah. months. You know, it's is Trump. it is it a month months long process? For oh, you it to- could be years. If you listen to my first John Madden, sounds like hey, here's a guy. Uh, or my George W. Bush back. Those are the two or two of them that you know made people know who I was. Um, a lot of those impressions, they they start, but nobody's doing them. Once people start doing, like how many Donald Trumps have you heard now? Yeah, and they yeah. and it's it's like, well, there's some. Oh, how many Christopher Walkins? They could be high, it could be low, it could be in the middle. Just make sure you get the speech pattern right. Ex- accentuate the wrong <laughs> syllables. Whisper now um so you find those different impressions um now you have to have the take and you can come from two different ways you can come from pure hate or you find an emotion and attach it you can come from hate i'll use alec baldwin as an example alec baldwin's donald trump came from just his pure hatred of donald trump right and right. wherever somebody's political where's in the political spectrum that's not what i'm talking about here for the audience so it's like I, right but you can feel that coming through you can feel the disdain yeah 
I actually get ripped for my 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 Trump being a little too nice. And I'm like, but yes, I'm not enough people. He does enough things that people say stuff. And right. It's all out there. I, you don't need me to be part yeah. of that. But the, my, what I would do with Donald Trump or what I've done with Donald Trump is I, I, I go, I'm amazed that the fact that he can say something, somebody can say, you just said that and say, I never said it. I never said it once. Like we just played it back. You're actually saying it. You said it. 30 seconds. I never said that. Maybe it was somebody else saying it. Do you think it was somebody else, quite frankly? And, you know, I've got him down to just three words. Probably, quite frankly, quite frankly, probably, probably, quite frankly, quite frankly, probably, probably, quite frankly, quite frankly, probably, quite frankly, probably, probably, quite frankly. It's like Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy. I am Groot. What are you going to do about it? Probably. quite frankly. So um, that's the take. When you find the take on, on the person, what's what's the thing that makes them you know, interesting. What's the, what's the, what's the, and I always try to go from lighthearted and fun. What's, even if I don't like the person, I find something that I like about them. Jeff Goldblum can meander through anything. Uh, you ask him a question, oh, uh, why, uh, uh, yes or no, maybe. Uh, I'm not really sure. Why, why, why is my favorite letter. But before uh, it's a part-time vowel, it is, yes. Why uh, can be a, a, a vowel or a consonant, a consonant, or a vowel, a vowel, which is it? It decides, uh, depending on the situation. Uh, 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 vowels, consonants will uh, find a way to survive. They will, uh, yes. You know, so it's, what's the, what's the take on the person what's you know there's lots of voices i could do that don't have a take uh and um so let's go to the process the process is basically you find a word or a sound and you start with that sound like jeff goldblum you can just start with uh, uh, uh and just go why 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 ooh ooh why ooh yes yes okay uh and now and now, now so you 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 find the you can find the pitch in there, but it doesn't have to be perfect because of the stuff I said about walking before. So let's go, um, let's take a, a, there's a bass voice that I don't know why it works for so many, but it, it really does. You can find tons of voices just going back to Kermit the Frog. And I've, I've, I've been doing this, you know, probably 20 years of this reference. And it's, for, it's been for different people throughout time. But Kermit the Frog, hi ho, Kermit the Frog here, which is Jim Henson is here, right? Jim Henson and Kermit the Frog, a you know, so you you yeah. do this, you know, Ernie, Bert, oh Bert, Ernie, and Frank Oz is another one. If you add, you know, if you have uh, Ernie and Bert, you know, and you combine them two, you get Patrick Mahomes. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So there's an interesting thing there, but. Kermit the Frog, hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. And then if you bring it down a little bit, becomes John C. Riley. Did you touch my drum set? Did you touch my drum set? <laughs> then if you add some air, if you add some air and some like some genius to it, it becomes Mark Ruffalo. Geez, Tony, I, I see this as an absolute win. I, I didn't even know. It's a lot of awesome shucks. Oh, geez, Tony. Then you can actually um, turn it into Joe Rogan. Wow, Jamie, pull that up, Jamie. Oh my God, that's crazy. Oh. So all those voices, then you, if you add more, you know, add more Frank Oz, oh, it becomes Ray Romano, no, no. You know, all those, and they're all so similar. Dude. Um, that's amazing. Those it's are all like can you sing the voice, right? Yeah, are you musical? Well, You've got this ear, you have to. I, I, I got your, some, But your I, voice. Yeah, Can't you just, sing? I could. Can you I could. Sing? I never worked yeah. on it. I never really worked on it. Um, okay. Because the thing about singing impressions, just impressions, um, you, all you can, I always thought you can, all you can really do is rhyme with them, right? You're not really doing jokes. You're rhyming things. And that never interested me. And I was never really, a, yeah. I was never really into music. I was more listening to, you know, how people said stuff. But I'm going to backtrack another one. So I did a thing, a TikTok thing, where I was showing people how to do Morgan Freeman. So Morgan Freeman, I think anybody can actually do a decent version of Morgan Freeman. It might not sound exactly like him, but you can get to the point where you can, you can do something that's passable. And you just have to start off really quiet because you have to think of it like building a muscle. So if, I, if you want to start with Morgan Freeman, you pick a phrase. And the phrase for me was, ah, ah, yes, ah, yes. This is my voice, ah, yes. Now you bring it down to the deepest voice you can do. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Right. Ah, uh, yes. Now you wow. start to find the pitch. You go, ah, uh, 
yes. Ah. Well, there it is. Ah. <laughs> no, this is this is six months worth of practice. Ah. Wow. And then you go up and down almost lyric, you know, like melodically. It's, ah, yes. Ah, yes. Truth of the matter is, that's what it seems to be. So oh you God. find, and there's a little bit, you know, a little bit of Southern sound in there. There's the uh, a Southern accent. Uh, there's, there's, you know, people like when you listen to Charles Barkley, he's got, uh, you know, Alabama. Then he's got Philadelphia. He's yeah. got a lot of things mixing in there. Um to, to create a, his own unique dialect. Every person right. has their own unique dialect. Like Robert Downey Jr. does this thing where he seems to be burping halfway through every sentence. Okay, so I'm going to accentuate exactly what we're saying. Do me a favor, just enjoy me because that's what you need to do. All right, okay. Um, but here's here's another <laughs> thing. Watch this. Here's another thing. So, Robert Downey Jr. Okay, Robert Downey Jr. You bring it up and raise the pitch and it's throw me a freaking bone here, please. Okay. And this is where this is where it gets even more interesting because quite frankly, if you add some airiness, it becomes Donald Trump. Throw me a freaking bone here, please. I know what you're saying. This is tremendous. It's amazing. So it's they're all, you know, you can find different things. I've heard uh. other people do this because sometimes people cheat them and well, you know, uh, Chris, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth, in here, in here, in here. What down here is Russell Crowe. I'm Maximus Decimus Meridius. Oh, shit. Are you not entertained? You know, so <laughs> there, there are similarities uh, that you can Dude. find in, in all these voices. The, uh, I know you've, you've put some things out that you've done with your daughter. Yeah. She's got some talent, right? She's very funny. Yeah, she's uh she's very funny. She's got this British accent she does. Uh she gets How old? She's, she's major, right? Yeah, she's 15 now. She's very okay. funny. I she's taking um you know, theater class and all the stuff that I She's so confident though. I mean, like it, she commits right away. I couldn't do that at 15. Yeah, she, I, mean, I mean, I think it's Disney Channel. She's just got a lot of sass, you know. <laughs> so I grew up, I grew up, it was three boys, you know, three boys mm -hmm. and uh, old school, not super old school, but kind of an old schoolish Italian dad. Um, my mom had almost no say in our house. It didn't feel like, you know, you know, it, it was just, you know, we all listened to her, but it was kind of like, I don't know, we're three rugrats and we just kind of were yeah. you know, probably out of control most of the time. When you have a daughter and you start to understand that there's more in this world, you start to realize, oh my God, what a terrible human being I am. Right, right. I'm just a piece of garbage. Uh, and then you, <laughs> you know, and it shouldn't be, right? It shouldn't be that you're like, oh, my son, they'll be fine. I'm like, I just gotta, I know. I gotta, I, you know, what Chris Rock, just gotta keep her off the pole. You know, it's, it's <laughs> I didn't, you know, you yeah. don't understand that until you just, you, you, because there's so many different things and my son is really, really smart, but I feel he's pretty lazy at times. I'm like, he's brilliantly <laughs> smart, but I'm like, I don't see any laziness in my daughter. And I think that's part, partially society, right? Like women have to fight to get, you know, and, and it's not just women, it's, you know, ethnicity can determine this yeah. and stuff like that, but you have to fight to get somewhere. And sometimes we, you know, take somebody who looks like you or me, we go, oh, you know, we're just going to do it. We take things for granted. And yeah. uh, when you see your own child or friends and stuff like that, you go, gosh, I, it really opens your eyes. And you know, that's part of what's going on in culture, too. Um, I mean, all around. And I think that's I think that's a good thing. Uh, well, I know it's a good thing, but I, it's but people don't understand. You don't look outside yourself very much. And when you yeah. have kids, all of a sudden you have kids and you're like, oh, my gosh, what? look at all this stuff I haven't been paying attention to my entire life and just made assumptions. And sometimes you're like, there's nothing I can do to fix this, but at least I can yeah. be a good person. Um, and, uh, well, you know, Josh knows my daughters. I have three of them and they're in their twenties now. And I, over the last 25 years, you know, I've felt they've taught me so much about what a piece of shit I, I was <laughs> when I was younger yeah. and, you know, I just try to try to do better, but it is amazing. Right. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, my daughter works so hard and she's smart too. She's very smart. It's a different kind. She's more straight ahead smart, but she's very witty. And, you know, she's got crazy comebacks and stuff like that. Where my son is more of an outside the box, weird thinker. 
Um, and she, you know, my, my daughter will hit you out of left field, but my son will be like four steps in a different direction where he'll have to explain the joke to me or whatever he's saying. And I'm like, that's okay. Great. I mean, that's, that's a bit too much. It doesn't work as a joke, but that does work for, you know, solving a, a, a you know, astrophysicist problem. NASA. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So, that's amazing. so, so, okay. So I, I got, it's just so fascinating. You get this, you get a voice, you get a phrase. First of all, do you listen to hours of the person before I you used start? To. You just... I used to, but now I don't so much. I can kind of guess. And a, a part of that's probably my laziness, which is where my son gets it from. Um, the, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I see. I don't even always do like dead on. I, like I think there's a difference between an impersonation and an impression. An impersonation to me is like somebody who's trying to be the person. They're trying to sound exactly like them. I try to be a little bit more of a caricature, so it's funny. You know, with a with an incredible voice, you can. This is what it makes you do. Oh my god, that's good. You, that's what you do. But you don't necessarily laugh. You might laugh at the beginning with, oh my gosh, that's good. But where are the jokes? That's where the take comes in. And that's where you have to blow it up a little bit. And, you know, Dana Carvey, I think is the best of all time. He goes full on cartoon character with stuff. Daryl Hammond is one of the greatest to do it exactly yeah. right on. And I like to be right in the middle and try and do the face and stuff like that to do something. You know, that's I amazing. tell people with the face, it's the mouth. It, I call it the pizza slicer. There's a line across your eyebrows, a point down at the chin and it's a triangle. And, whatever you do with your face, the mouth tells you how they talk and the eyes tell you how they think. So when you, when you watch wow. a person's mouth, so we'll go an easy one, Donald Trump, right? So he, he does the fish, the fish face, like he's looking into an aquarium and mimicking the fish, the short and quite tricky. <laughs> and then you add the eyes and you're like, well, quite frankly, this clown fish, Nemo, that's all you're ever going to be, a clown fish. So then you add what's the take behind them so if you get and if you can have the look and sell the look it's it, it's just as important as the voice the voice doesn't have to be great watch watch people that's why i don't like deep fakes so many people are doing these deep fake impressions yeah. one it's like the ultimate cheat it's like yeah. once you look a, like exactly like somebody you your your brain hears the person because they see what the person looks like and it's a little bit of a cheat when you do it with the physicality of your own face, but there's a, there's some art to that too. Absolutely. Um, yeah, exactly. right? yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the deep fake stuff too, uh, to be honest with you, I think eventually they're not going to allow some of that stuff because people are yeah, going to start I doing it. It's, it feels like, like, because somebody will try and do an ad, somebody will try and do a commercial yeah. where they're doing that. I, they, they've asked me to do that kind of stuff. They t- asked me to do AI commercials. Um, you know, wow. to, and I'm like, well, did you get the permission from the person? Because if you're, if you're trying to, there's a way you can do things. You can do parody. There's parody. And there's, you know, if you do an impression, say you're doing an impression, you can, you can do that. There's, there's a way, like, you're not trying to say, I am this person. You're not trying to hide, but as soon as you try to deceive, and that's what you do with a deep fake, you're selling the person's yeah. whole, you know, you're selling their face. And they, yeah. the, the internet isn't regulated that much. So they're trying to do that in like video games, uh, not video games, but in um, in apps and stuff like that. So um, I just say, no, I go one, I think it's, I, I think it's wrong. And I've been offered tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this wow. kind of stuff. But two, imagine doing that to an actor and the actor's no. like, well, what are you doing? What are you, why would you? <laughs> yeah. you, you but know, even more dangerous, I, I was like, you know, if people read stupid shit and believe it all like like hillary's eating babies and all these people are, wait till they see it and they can't disseminate that as, yeah well as i mean first real. of all i need you to tell me something that isn't true to use an example <laughs> okay quite frank look at, look at you both on that you're both like is he, yeah is he, does he believe this oh my god oh my god we can't Okay. Caliendo's and, all Q. He's he's all in on Q. No, <laughs> I don't even know what it was. I just I just know I heard that Cali, Caliendo with a Q. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I just remember it's Tom Hanks and uh, was it Oprah? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> the looks on your face is like what? 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 <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> we just we just went down a real hole here. This is getting We're, real interesting. <laughs> We almost went Alex Jones, guys. That's a problem. Oh, uh, God. They're turning the frogs gay. That's what's happening here. Holy <laughs> do you, do, I would eat my neighbors. I would eat, I would eat my neighbors. 
Do you ever do work on impressions and then some of the mannerisms stick with you? Like become, you, you do it so well and so often that some things become familiar and you like enjoy it and you can't help but incorporate it. Yeah, it just happens. At, or, but my voice, people hear different voices in my own voice. Like I've yeah. heard people say, you just sound like Robert Downey Jr. If I'm pausing a little bit like this, that, that's not full RDJ, but if it did or Jack Nicholson, <laughs> you know, if I get in here, it's Jack Nicholson. Yeah, you get a little glottal what becomes a John Madden sound kind of thing. Pat Summerall, they all you know, they all depending on how I say something, people you know start to say, "Wow, you kind of sound like." But they also hear my voice in the impression. I I don't try to take my voice completely out of the impression. One, uh, that's not my thing. I'm not the best at that. Um, and two. I like it to be a little piece of me. That that's that's the artwork yeah. of it to me. It's not. I'm not trying to do a photograph. I'm trying to make a painting. That's really what I'm trying to do. Did you watch Rich Little? When yeah, you were young? yeah. It was mostly on the Muppet Show and the Love Boat. Okay. That's when I saw him. But yeah, yeah he was yeah. always guest starring on something like that. Now he was trying to do the person exactly, and right. it was very vaudevillian, old school style of doing it. I like, like I said, more the Dana Carvey, the, the yeah. you know, the 80s Saturday Night Live approach where you did cartoon it up a little bit and made it a little bit bigger. You know, Eddie Murphy is the same way, you know, with the impressions he would do. So stuff to make it more fun and, and have that take on the person. What's the yeah. take? Because if you just, you know, if you just have the voice, you're just going, OK, you got the voice. It's great. You can do you can dub with it but you can't use it anywhere. It can't, they can't get used in a sketch so much because the sketch is over in the first 30 seconds. Cause you're just like, Oh, the, the writing has to be unbelievable for you to do a dead on yeah. impression. And maybe I'm just not that good of a writer. So. Do you, do you, is there ever anyone that um, was the hardest for you to get that you really tried? Or was there ever anyone you were like, I, I just don't have this person. In Hundreds. Me. If you haven't heard me do it, I've tried, I probably tried and couldn't figure it out. That's the thing wow. is there's, you know, they, you just don't know. And me might be working on it, you know, in the background, uh, you know, like if you have your windows open and you have windows open in the background, there might be some window in my brain working on it in the background every once in a while. Like I've been trying to figure out Peyton Manning and it's, he's, he's hard because he's nasal. The same thing with um, Biden is very nasal too. anybody who's got that nasal sound. It's uh, it's hard to replicate without like even pinching your nose. Wow. Uh, so with Biden, it's like, come on, man, you know, the deal, the guy, with the thing. I don't know. Like whenever I see Biden, he's like, I don't have to tell you, no, tell me you're the president. Please just give me a clue a little bit. Help me out here. And, uh, this is, this is, one, this is one of the things I've gotten with Joe Biden. So my Biden, and again, I come from just silliness on this stuff. Um, yeah. Biden is, uh, he's got the whisper follow-up like Trump would say, and everybody knows it. And like, nobody knew anything. And he was, and everybody knows it. <laughs> Yeah. Like, how does everybody know it? What is that? Is that hypnotic? What, what Biden does this. He's got the whisper follow up and he'll say something. They'll be talking about the vaccines and be like, it's not politics. It's science. It's science. It's not politics. It's science. It's not the heat. It's the humidity. It's the humidity. It's not delivery. It's the sure and all. It's the sure and all. Come on. You know the deal. By, by the way. DiGiorno, the number one home pizza, number one home pizza of all time. What's a home pizza? Everybody knows it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of those where the voice isn't 100% there, but you get it because of the take on the person, right? It's a good enough take that you get where it's coming from. Um, God, it's brilliant. Just see, brilliant. It is. It's really funny. 100%. Do you it ever, really real is. quick, do you ever like, I, I have a, uh, a problem, like I will, uh, if I'm hanging around, like, English friends. It's like an empathic. You'll start thing. to assimilate. Well, yeah. yeah, and I won't. I won't sound the voice, but my phrasing will be like, uh, you know, I I got a mate named Frank who I yeah. met at college at university. I, yeah, I think that's um, something that um, happens to all of us. And um, yes, and um, that's my Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> I am the key of Asgard. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I think we all do that because you start to, you know, for people you're around, you hear it more. We start to assimilate to yeah. because we all, in general, we all want to be liked, right? In some way, shape or form, even if you're a person who's a contrarian or something like that, you want to be liked by somebody. But, um, yeah. but we, we do that. We, we start to talk like if everybody talks a certain way, you don't want to stick out and not be part of the group. Um, right. Yeah. I tell my kids, I go, you're going to talk one way around your friends. You're going to talk another way around teachers. You're going to talk another way around parents and adults. And 
But you have to know, here's the thing, you have to know how to navigate those and play the game because that's the way it works. That's the reality yeah. of society, right? You you play the game a little bit. Some people have to play a bigger game than others, but no, don't get mixed up. Don't talk to your teacher like you talk with your friends. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're gonna, you yeah. know, that's, that's, you have to learn that. And some people, you can see the people who don't have that ability um, yeah. and they, wow. they get up in trouble. So if um, you move to London for two years, would you like, go, go full Madonna? Like by Josh, accident, you Josh, just start Josh, using it? here's the first thing you've insulted me. I'd be there in two minutes. Just kidding. Uh, no, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I remember going down south as a kid to Oklahoma. We'd all be talking like this. Let's go down to, you know, let's go down to the mud hole. My, 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 uh, my, literally, we did. My, I remember my, my, uh, my, my, my mom's um, cousins raised hogs. So they'd all, you know, nice. they go, 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 oh, go yeah. the, the pigs just, uh, you know, in the mud and we go swimming in the mud with them. <laughs> Why my parents let us do this stuff? Mike. We're from Kentucky. We get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're from Kentucky. There you go. I yeah. guess it's a whole different room. Uh, before we let you go, Frank, what what uh, what's your favorite movie all time? Oh, geez, The Natural's way up there. Um, the some of the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, including um, Endgame, uh, just because it was such a cultural thing. A phenomenon with my daughter. She loves that stuff. My Fantastic. daughter. Yeah, she broke her elbow a few years ago. And uh, I finagled her to meet a bunch of Avengers and stuff like that. She's met oh, Chris Evans. Wow. Who's, yeah, Chris Evans ended up being a huge fan. He's like, oh, my God, do some Madden. And my daughter's like, Captain America knows my dad. You know, <laughs> crazy. That's huge. That was on her 13th huge. birthday. I was, I was the 13th birthday. And she's like, this is the greatest day of my life. I'm like, it's all down here from Hill. Down here from Hill. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, here was the other crazy little thing. I'll give this other. Like, Josh Brolin was there, too. And Brolin had watched me. He and Oliver Stone watched me to get the W impression in the movie W. So Come on. I'd wow. had an I'd had an interview about that, and he's talking about it. it's like you. He goes, "You don't understand." I'm like, "What?" He goes, "That movie was me doing you." I was like, "Really? Do I get any accolades for that? Can you tell everybody that?" And he kind <laughs> he of talked about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, that's <laughs> it didn't have yeah. anything to do with the inner, you know, the the actual acting. But he's like, "Yeah, Oliver and I watched video awesome. of you all the time." So. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, did I answer the question? Because I don't always get yeah, it. A favorite movie, the favorite movie, yeah. the natural part. Well, yeah, the natural, yeah, the natural's way up there. Endgame is up there too. Um, I'm trying to think. There's probably some others, but those are the ones that come to my mind just because they're so tied into me emotionally. Even if they're not my favorites, they tie yeah. into parts of my life. For most people, most people have that thing where they have a song for that part of their life. For me, it's television and movies. I mean, Seinfeld. Yeah. It was Oberman and um, Dan Patrick on Sundays, Patrick. Uh, the big show. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's when I was in college. So moments yeah. uh, like that, moments in time, they get frozen with those kinds of things for me. So, yeah. Well, we usually end with two questions. The first being uh, the movie, but I, and the, I'm going to have to answer break. really quickly. Is there, is there one more? Because my headphones are yeah. about to die. So 10, oh, I get 10 okay. uh, uh, Front row center to see anybody dead or alive. Front row center. Oh, um, <laughs> dead or alive? Wow! Uh, I'm glad your phones, your phones are running out. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping they do because I don't want to. So <laughs> Barry Manilow. Um, <laughs> he writes the songs that make the whole world sing. He does. Uh, who would I? I don't know. I don't really know that. I. I'm never. I'm not an audience person. I'm. I. I you know. I'm All amazed right. by things, but I. I I've always rather been the person, you know, I, I was always the person kind of holding court. I, I'm a weird person. I get weirded out by people clapping for me and stuff like that, but I'm pretty good at going out and talking at people. I'm terrible <laughs> in groups in, in conversation. I'm trying to think, if the, I'm trying to think historically, because it's hard if you say, if you're front row center, I mean, listen, I, uh, way up there, maybe a Muhammad Ali fight. Um, yes way up there um I, yes. I never saw michael jordan play live um no way uh yeah i think that would be wow. i think that would be up there if there was i'm trying to think if there's something musically um i, I really don't know because I, I i mean i i you know those those are a couple things i don't think that i i couldn't tell you if those are my top because there might be something else historically you know even 
uh, right now, it's it's uh, if if I could bring my daughter, it would be Harry Styles. That's because that's all go. she that's all she cares about. So yeah, usually it's a hypothetical. I, you can bring her. Yeah, like, <laughs> I was, I've, I've already got her to. I'm, I'm flying her somewhere at some point. I don't remember. No, the, she, he's actually coming to Phoenix. So, um, but she's trying to get there me to fly her to all these other places. I so, guess. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, buddy. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what's next for you? Anything you want to? plug a little bit uh yeah i mean do we come out right away the podcast come out right away or when is uh the, yeah next week uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. no this week this week so uh yeah, yeah i mean irvine at the improv in irvine and levity live in oxnard california uh the uh 20 uh the 29th and 30th of october frank on uh for those so oxnard on the 29th or I'm sorry, Irvine Improv on the 29th, um, Oxnard Levity Live on uh, Saturday the 30th. And then I got some stuff out east, um, uh, Pennsylvania and Atlantic City, uh, Pitts Pittsburgh, Terrific. Atlantic City and Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Those are, uh, I think, in December. So frankonstage.com for those. And just did uh, some things for uh, Peyton and Eli um, oh, for the... Uh, for the, for the uh, alternate broadcast. Did some stuff, not on the show actually, but talking about it so that stuff's going to start airing right that's now cool. too. So, yeah. that's really cool bud best of luck come back and see us again will you god this was entertaining to. thank you yes. yeah maybe you guys get a chance to ask some questions next time <laughs> <laughs> it's like walton Thanks. what is that a bird that's a pterodactyl <laughs> flying through unbelievable how great is this i've been in a closet for 25 years oh fantastic Thanks, thank Brian. you Thanks, Thanks, buddy how awesome Holy. is that? I mean, I mean come on, Josh. Uh, from the jump. I, I, from the I mean, get-go. It was like, on oh, fire. my God. Uh, and and I, my stomach was hurting. There yeah. were times my stomach was hurting. Yeah. What a talented dude. That is, that, it's so crazy the way he jumps back and forth. What a fast mind. I mean, uh, and to, yeah, I, I'm glad you asked because he had to have just been, uh, you know, the cut up in school making fun of I mean, all can, the teachers and all the, all his friends gosh i mean <laughs> <laughs> i mean you, you just the way his and he talked about his energy that's why i bet he yeah. enjoys doing robin williams because yeah. he's got you know he can match that energy like most people can but that was that was unbelievable there were times i was just mesmerized and i loved hearing the process just one little Me phrase too. and he starts with that and then he said months and years to get someone right that's that's i mean he that's, that's, work, art. that's a lot of work yeah but i i love how he you know even he said you know i like to you know have a piece of myself in there because you know you feel like you're and yes of course you would mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. he and, said and, the exact it, it's amazing though that he can he can contort his face in a way that, that when when he's doing some people he, he just takes them on almost it, right? it is it's like he he must feel like he's looking out of their eyes like he yeah. morphs and he's got you know not thinking about oh i don't want to look like de niro he must feel like he's de niro you know what i mean yeah yeah. That's amazing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, bud, uh, we got the NBA basketball season starting this week. Mm -hmm. uh, happy and happy NBA season. Hopefully uh, Phoenix Suns will do well again. My Phoenix Suns. Um, got any thoughts on the on the season? Um, I just can't believe it's already coming around. Yeah, again, too. That's, that's well, fine. we'll have plenty. We'll have plenty to catch up on next week. Recap yep. the first week of the season and get back into basketball, buddy. That was fun. Yes, today. sir. That was great. Let's do it again next week on basketballnews.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review.